Well, it's really good uh, to see all of you in a different setting like than normal. Uh, <laughs> crazy days, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. You know, I just wanted to start, I, start off by telling you a little bit about us and what's been going on since, you know, the uh, quarantine. Uh, you know, we haven't slowed down like you guys, but I'm hearing, and you know, we've actually speeded way up. And, uh, you know, uh, we are doing multiple Zoom meetings and Facebook Live um, meetings every day. And, uh, you know, we're doing uh, healing prayer. Uh, we, we've gotten so busy. We're not doing them at the healing rooms, but we're doing them online. Uh, we're doing them through uh, FaceTime and through Zoom calls. And so we've gotten so busy, uh, we had to add an extra day. We were doing four days a week. Now we're doing five days a week. You know, the enemy <laughs> tried to shut us down and it's exploded. It seems like it's had the reverse effect. And where we used to just, you know, mostly, you know, uh, uh, minister just to locals, now we're, we're, we're reaching people all over the world. Uh, and people are being healed all over the world through FaceTime. Yeah and Zoom call. And so, you know, it's amazing what God has done. I believe, uh, you know, God is using this time. It's, it's been really, really powerful, but we're doing teachings, daily teachings, you know, with, with myself and, and other staffs uh, and worship sets with some of our worship team. And so uh, we, we're, we're going for it, you know, and uh, you know, when we were, uh, some of you have been to our healing rooms, we have daily services and, you know, and a lot of times we'll have about 150, maybe 200 people show up for our services. And then we stream those and we have a few hundred extra people watching. Uh, but now uh, we have uh, between three and 4,000 people watching every day. Uh, so, uh, and then we've had up to 30 to 40,000 watching. And so now we have an international uh, you know, group with the, with that we're reaching out to and, and touching. So, uh, you know, I feel like God has uh, moved us out of an old era into a new era. We're in a, we're in a new season. We're in a new era. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, we're using the technology now to reach more people because I, I believe uh, that we're, we're entering into a, a brand new awakening. There's an awakening happening. There's, there's a, uh, you know, there's a, a movement that's, that's, that we're, we're, we've entered into. And, uh, and uh, you know, we're, we're going to begin to do things a little different than we've done things in the past. See, when you, when you, when you, when you uh, end an era, you know, you start a new era. And so there's new, there's new beginnings. And uh, it's not going to look like it used to look. And so we're praying into that. You know, what, what is it going to look like? Uh, so we have, uh, we've got a lot, lot going on, but God has really been speaking to me, um, uh, during this time of being shut in and, uh, you know, and, and he was, in the, he was talking to me about the most important thing we can do as we're sheltering at home is, is be in the word right now, just be students of the word. I don't know about you guys, but I've been, I've been reading the Bible and studying the Bible, and he's shown me new things that I haven't discovered or seen. He's given me uh, a, a, a different outlooks on, on what he's saying. Uh, how many know there's, 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 hidden, there, there's hidden gems, there's hidden treasure in the Word of God, and some of it <clears throat> he hides uh, uh, until uh, uh, his perfect timing, and then he begins to reveal things in his Word and so, you know, God is really speaking us, to us through his word right now. And it's so important as we have this extra time is to be in the word, uh, but also uh, uh, practice listening prayer. And it's so important. And the Lord is speaking to me uh, about the highest form of prayer right now is listening prayer. You know, be still and know that I am God. And, and, you know, he has so much to say to us right now. He'll speak to us through his word, but he'll also speak to us through his presence. And um, so often, you know, we come to him and we have our prayer list and we pray that prayer list. And that's really a good thing. And then we think we're finished, but we didn't give a ch God a chance to speak to us, <laughs> you know. And I feel like God is saying, you know, let me initiate the prayer, you know. And so what I've been doing, I've been asking, Lord, what is on your heart today? What, what's, what are you saying to us in this season? And then have a journal and just be quiet before him and just and practice the presence of the Lord. Practice listening right now. 
and, and uh, then be, begin to journal, begin to write down what he's saying to us, because he's saying a lot right now, and he wants to be heard right now, more than I think any, any, any other time in my lifetime, uh, at least, uh, he's speaking clearly and loudly to us if we have ears to hear right now. But we have to position, position ourselves to hear from the Lord right now. And it's not hard. I mean, the Lord is almost like he's, hey, he's almost shouting. I will, I've got so much to say to you right now. I've got new strategies for a new era. We're moving into something brand new. And he wants to reveal his plans and his purposes to us. And so, again, I think that the highest form of prayer right now is to listen. Listening prayer. Now, we still need to give our request, you know, to the Lord. But um, that's not, <clears throat> the priority is listening to, to the Lord and seeing what's on his heart. And then also, I'm uh, praying in the spirit way more uh, than, I, than I have been in the past. And I feel like the Lord said, it's time. We really need to amp up praying in the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and as we know, as we pray in the Holy Spirit, it enables us to pray, you know, the perfect will of God into every situation. Did you know that? We pray the perfect will of God. That's what I want. I want to pray his perfect will. And a lot of times we don't have the vocabulary to do that. But when we pray in the spirit, you know, our spirits talk to his spirit, the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and, and, and we pray in uh, the perfect will of God into every uh, situation. You know, uh, I become more edified and built up in faith when I pray in the Holy Spirit. Have you noticed that? Faith increases. And we get built up in, in the whole, you know, as we pray in the Holy Spirit. Holy, uh, praying in the, in the Holy Spirit uh, or in tongues um, uh, brings boldness and it brings strength and direction and guidance into our lives. And uh, so I'm praying so much more, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, when we just pray in the Holy Spirit. You know, power is released when we pray in the Spirit. Uh, and praying in the Spirit is one of the most uh, uh, powerful forms of spiritual intercession there is also. And it tells us in Jude verse 20, it says, but you dear friends, build up yourselves in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Huh. Uh, and it tells us, you know, in Ephesians 6, you know, it says, uh, you know, put on the full armor of God. But once we get the armor, that's not enough. A lot of times we stop there with, with that passage. But right after that, in verse uh, 18, it says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And, uh, and again, in Romans 8, uh, 26 and 27, it tells us that, that the, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. And, uh, in, and sometimes you don't know how to pray or what to pray. But when we begin to pray in the Holy Spirit, we pray according to, according, uh, to God's, God's perfect will. Uh, and the Spirit intercedes for us. Uh, come on. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a powerful time. And so I'm finding myself praying more and more in the Spirit. So I'm listening. I'm really listening to God. I'm, I'm positioning myself each day to listen to the Holy Spirit, to listen to what God is saying. And then I'm, and then I'm writing it down. I'm journaling what God is saying to us right now, because this is a very important time. We're entering in, like I said, into a, a new era. And, uh, you know, in Isaiah 43, 18, I believe we're living in that right now where it says, forget the former things. Even the good things we're doing in the past, that was, a, there's, we've passed over, we tra we've, tra we've trans transcended in, into a new era. And uh, so the, even the good things, you know, uh, it says, forget those former things and, and do not dwell on the past. Because it, it goes on to say, see, I'm doing a new thing. And the, and, the, and the thing that we need to understand when we're, um, when we're hanging on to what we were doing before, uh, in the past, we can miss what God's doing today. See, we're stuck in the old, but he says, if you forget those things, let those things go, even the good things you've done, where this is a new era, and if, and if you let go of the old, I'm going to open your eyes to see the new thing I'm doing right now. And so it's so important, you know, so is to let go of the old, and to, and to grasp the new, because God will open our eyes. Now, if we hang on to the old, we can't see the new. And so, and so we're living in Isaiah 43, 18 right now. And I really believe the Lord is saying also, this is a season of, of the new wineskin. And, um, you know, it's a season of a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. But you remember Jesus said you can't pour new wine into old wineskins, because the wineskins will burst. 
And so we need to have new wineskin. And so what God is doing in this time of, of sheltering at home, this quarantine time, also he's preparing in us a wineskin that will hold the new wine that he's pouring out right now. And it's starting right now, but it's really gonna, it's really gonna hit, I, I believe after Pentecost. But again, if, we're, if, we're, if we have the old container, if we have the old wineskin, if we're gonna be, be like we've always been, we, we could miss what God has for us. We're still Christians. We're still going to go to heaven, but we're, we're going to miss what God is doing now. And, and I believe what, what's coming, we've never seen before. And we can't be offended if God does something different than he's done it in the past. And, and that's why it's so important to pray, God, give me a pliable wineskin. Give me new, uh, a new wineskin to house the wine that you're about to pour out and you've already begun to pour out. Because we need to be, be able to contain what he's given us. We can't, if, you know, with an old wine skin, it'll, it'll just run out. We won't be able to contain it. And so right now, also, he's talking about the importance of having a, a new wine skin. And I feel like also it's a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, a lot of us have been baptized by the Holy Spirit years ago, you know, uh, and, and that's good. But I feel like the Lord said there's a, there's a new baptism that's coming. But I love what John said. <clears throat> uh, uh, he said, there's, you know, I baptize with water for repentance, but there's one coming after me who's more powerful than I am. And he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. And I believe there's a baptism of fire that's coming upon us right now. A lot of us have been baptized by the Holy Spirit, but there's a baptism of fire that's coming upon the church by those who right now who are seeking God, who are listening to God right now, who are, who are entering into, uh, into the, the new era. They're, they're praying, God, give me a wineskin, a new wineskin, praying in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you something. There's a baptism of fire that is going to come, and it's a good thing. What does fire do? It gives you illumination. It gives you revelation. It gives you clarity. It <clears throat> burns off all the chaff, all the stuff that we can't get rid of, the junk, you know. There's, there's it's a refining fire that comes in this baptism also. And I believe, I believe right now that God is going to come and we're going to, get, we're going to, we're going to uh, experience the baptism of fire. See, the Bible talks about three baptisms, baptism in water, baptism in the Holy Spirit, and baptism in fire. And many of us, I think all of us have been baptized in water, most of us in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but I don't know how many have been baptized in the fire. But there's a fire coming, and it's a good fire. It's a Holy Ghost fire, and I don't know about you, but I want that fire. You know, if it's from Jesus and he gives us, and then you know it's got to be good. And so I believe that we're going we're gonna to receive that. But also the important thing is, too, is to be filled daily. You know, the baptism is a one-time event, but the infilling must be a daily event. We must be filled daily uh, with the Holy Spirit and giving time uh, away from our distractions, our computers, our, you know, Facebook, all that, and just lay down before the Lord, listen to the Lord and say, Lord, refresh me and fill me afresh today. Because he's got so much. I believe that the harvest has begun. And, it, and it's, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to just be amazing what God is about to do. But we can't be distracted. And so I think that's a, part of that new wineskin is setting aside distractions. We cannot be distracted in this season and, 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 uh, and move in the power that God wants his church to move in. And so we're moving in. The Lord is telling me also we're moving into a higher dimension of glory. And that's biblical. You know, the Bible says he takes us from glory to glory. And, I, and I've experienced a lot of glory, but I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't experienced what's coming. And neither have you, because there's a higher degree of glory that we're about to enter into. And what is the glory? The glory is the undeniable, tangible, manifest uh, presence of the Lord. And I believe we're going to go into the face-to-face -face times with God as Moses did. As Moses climbed up that mountain and he was hidden in the cloud, there was fire on the mountain, wasn't there? But he had, he had an encounter with God, face-to-face -face encounter with God. And, uh, and I don't think Moses said a lot, but he heard a lot and he wrote down a lot. And when he came down off that mountain, man, he was shining. And, you know, and I'm telling you, the light of God is coming upon the church again and we're going to shine. We're going to be the answer. Uh, I, I feel like that we're going to have uh, uh, the answer for government and local government. Some of our city's problems is coming to the church. Uh, divine illumination is coming as we're spending time with the Lord. Those face-to-face -face encounters, he's going to give us the solutions. But I believe that we're not going to only have the solutions, but we're going to be carrying the solution. I believe that the glory is going to come on us again like Moses, and it's going to radiate off, us, off of us wherever we go. And a lot of times things will happen without us saying a word. A word. 
And, uh, you know, I love what St. Francis of Assisi said. He said, preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. And I, I'll tell you, it's not so much what we're going to say anymore. It's about what we're going to carry. And I feel like we're that, 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 the glory, that, that undeniable, tangible, manifest presence of the Lord, that new glory, this new era is going to be so strong. It's, it's, it's going uh, to um, bring conviction as you walk past somebody in the grocery store. And I believe they'll just begin to repent. And we'll say, what must I do to be saved? But why? Because you're carrying the presence of God that will bring conviction, that attracts people to Jesus. And so I believe this is, what, this is what's coming. Uh, with all my heart, I believe when I'm spending time with the Lord, you know, as I've been journaling some of these things, this is, this, is what, this is what's coming. This is what he's telling me. And again, it's, it's, again I keep saying this, but it's, it's a time not to be distracted. And, and it's a time of, of testing. And... Uh, <clears throat> And I, I want to say something, you know, testing is a must. Uh, testing uh, is your friend and testing unto promotion. And, and, uh, and we must be tested. You know, Jesus was tested. You know, look at Jesus' baptism, the things that happened to, happen to him at his baptism. Remember, there's three things that have to, happened to him right before he was launched into his public ministry. You know, as he was being baptized, he, the heavens were open. He, he had an open heaven, received an open heaven. Uh, the second thing that happened to Jesus was the Holy Spirit came on him in the form of a dove, which empowered him. So the open he heavens gave him revelation. The Holy Spirit gave him power. And then, he, and then a voice came from heaven saying, this is my son whom I'm well pleased. So identity came upon Jesus, which released him into authority. And, and, uh, and after that, he went, he went directly from that baptism into a time of testing. And, uh, and we're in a time of testing right now, you guys. And God has equipped us. I mean, it's been so amazing the last couple of years, all the teaching we've had, all the impartation we've had, all the things God has given us. It's been really, really, really good. But it says that Jesus went into the testing uh, uh, full of the Holy Spirit. But during the testing, you know, and, and he did pass the test, he came out in the power of the Holy Spirit. So what, it, what, what activates the power even though we're fully equipped, uh, is, is the testing. And we're in a time of testing. And, uh, and again, there's, there's, there's the things that the devil tests us on is, number one, he'll, he wants to steal your identity because he kept telling Jesus, you know, saying to Jesus, if you are the Son of God. And, and he's, he's telling some of you, if you are, you know, if you really are called, if you really are sons and daughters. And because he, he knows if he can take your identity, identity, he can steal your identity, he can take out your ministry or it would not be effective. Uh, as it should be. Uh, the devil is scared to death of our identity, you guys. He, even more than power, he's, a, he's afraid of our identities uh, because we are sons of God. We, uh, you know, the kingdom of God is our inheritance. You know, we're more than, we're more than friends. We're more than servants. We're, we, are, we are sons of God. And, and, uh, and, and you know, we, that means we have authority like Jesus. We have the same thing. Jesus gave us power and authority. And, and we have an open heaven also. And because of that, you know, you, know, you think about it. You know, when we, we get our identity from like being a servant, like I'm a, I'm a servant of God, and that's a good thing. Or I'm a friend, I'm a friend of Christ, and, or a friend of God, and that's a good thing. But that's not our identity. You are sons and daughters of the most high king. And, you know, and, and I'll tell you, it's like this. Servants beg, sons uh, I mean, uh, friends ask, but sons command. And there's authority on sonship. And, there's a, and so we really need to understand who we are and our identities right now, because that identity is what releases authority. And when we really understand who we are in Christ, I'm going to tell you something. We're going to be so effective. We're going to be so effective. And, and so that comes to, and so the devil, uh, it comes through testing. Jesus passed the test, Right. He took out the word of God and said, this, it is written. This is what the word says. And uh, another thing that the devil tries to do to us in this time of testing, he gives, tries to give us a better deal. And uh, he says, come and serve me, and I will give you all this kingdom. It's, it's mine to give. And I'll tell you something. A lot of Christians are falling for that right now. Even some famous uh, worship leaders, you know, the devil says, sell your soul to me, and I'll make you rich, and I'll make you famous. They've fallen for that, and, he, and now they're rich and famous, and they're away from God. 
and they're totally, completely serving the devil. I want to tell you something. It's happening. Don't fall for that. You're going to be tested in these kinds of things. Where it's not a time to be famous. It's not a time to be seen. You know, it's, it's time that Jesus is seen, and we want to point to him. We want to lift up Jesus in this season. We want to be hidden so, so Christ will be seen in this season. And that's going to be a major key. It's not about building our ministries anymore. It's about building up Jesus, about the, uh, building up the kingdom of God right now is, is the most important thing that we can, we can be doing right now. And so, but after, like I said, after the testing, Jesus it says he left the time of testing in the power of the Holy Spirit, and then he walks into the synagogue, and a, hand, and a scroll is handed to him, and he begins to, to, uh, to preach a prophecy, Luke 4.18, a prophecy about him. You know, and he reads it, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. And he talks about opening in blind eyes and setting the captives free. And, and he says that today, this is fulfilled in your presence. And I want to tell you something. We need to begin to declare right now who we are in Christ. You know, right, especially right now. And after you get through the test, and say, this is who I am. These, I, I've been, it's been prophesied. Today is a day where a new era. And, and make a statement, boldly say, this is who I am. And this is where I'm going. The Holy Spirit has anointed me to preach good news you know, to the poor. And I want to tell you something. The good news is about to explode in a very, very powerful way around the earth. There, like I said, there's a great awakening and there's a great harvest that's upon us. And it's not going to be like, you know, like it's been in the past where it's going to be tough or hard. God is, is softening hearts. And when we're, we're fishing with a pole, you better get a net because they're coming in. They're going to be, just going to, they're going to be jumping in the boat, so to speak. So uh, anyway, that's kind of like some of the things the Lord's been showing me right now. And uh, I don't know why I went there, but I guess I was supposed to <laughs> talk about a little bit about those things. Um, but I was asking the Lord today about, um, you know, what is it, Lord, that you want to speak, you know, to these um, today, the generals. And I really feel like the Lord is saying at this time also, uh, it's a time uh, to examine our hearts. Uh, it's a time to open our hearts fully to the Lord. Uh, and um, uh, which will result in more revelation and more dreams, more direction and more uh, 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 plans, God's plans right now. But God is doing heart surgery on us right now. Did you know that? During this time, he's, he's, he's focusing on our hearts. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, but our hearts have memory. Did you know that? Just like our brains have memory, uh, our hearts have memory. And, uh, and a lot of things are in our heart, you know, will affect us from past traumas and things like that. It's time to get healed up. But our, our hearts have mem memories. And uh, I remember this, I was listening to a story about <clears throat> a man that got a heart transplant. And, uh, and it was from a, a, a young woman uh, who was murdered. And, but he received her heart. And uh, when, uh, when he received the heart, all of a sudden, uh, you know, he was more emotional, you know, but also he knew the name and the person who murdered the girl and he didn't have no idea, but it was the memories in the heart. The heart was transplanted into him and they were able to identify and, 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 and arrest the guy uh, uh, that, that murdered the girl because the memory was still in the heart. And so our hearts are, 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 are uh, powerful. And the Bible talks so much more about our hearts than our minds. We know we, we, we need, to, God is really, uh, really working on our hearts right now. And, and we need to prepare our hearts for what God is bringing us into in this season. It tells us in, in, uh, in Samuel, 1 Samuel 16, 7, it says, The Lord does not look at the things man uh, looks at. Man looks at the outer appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Come on. See, right now, when God looks at us, he's, he's not looking at our parents. He's not even really looking at our minds. He's searching our hearts right now. Did you know that? That's what God looks at. He looks at the heart. And uh, in Deuteronomy 4, 29, it says, look for the Lord, the Lord with all your heart. And right now we're supposed to be looking. And that's why I'm saying we're getting away and, and get, getting rid of distractions right now. Uh, I, I just want to tell you, distraction is an enemy right now. It's time to put things away, put things aside and focus on God and look 
for God. Um, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. And you remember the story. There's so many stories in the Gospels. Let's be keeping our eyes on Jesus. And remember Peter when he was walking on water, experiencing the exact same miracle as Jesus. As long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was walking in the miraculous. But when he got his eyes off of Jesus and onto his problem, you know, he lost that miracle. He began to sink, and he was in big trouble, and Jesus had to come and rescue him. We need to keep our eyes upon Jesus right now. Uh, in Psalms 34, verse 5, it says, Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces are never covered with shame. And it's time is to keep, we need to keep our gaze right now on Jesus. You know, I'll tell you something. If you look, honestly, you look for Jesus, you'll find Jesus. You will actually see Jesus. You don't look with him with your eyes. You look with him with your heart. And if you, as we begin to look for Jesus, he will reveal himself. And I believe that's when we're going to have these face-to-face -face encounters. And as we look to him who is the light of the world, it says we will become radiant. Because now, you know, we're going to be reflecting him. You know, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You know, because he's the exact replication of who the Father is. So we know what God's like by looking at Jesus. Now, people are going to know what Jesus looks like as he look at us. But how's that going to happen? But we've got to spend that time with him and, and, and let, that, let the radiance of his face, you know, shine on us. And it takes away all shame also, because it's never about us. It's always about Jesus. It's not about us and our shortcomings or our failings. It's about Jesus and his successes. He's always the solution. And in John 1, verse 29, it says, Look, I love this. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And that's what we need to be pointing to Jesus. And I, we always say this in our healing. So if we can get you to see Jesus, you'll be healed. Our goal is to get people to look for Jesus, to find Jesus, to see Jesus. And, and he's the one who comes. He takes away the sin of the world. But he's also the one who will come and he will heal your body. If we can get you to see Jesus, not only will he take away your sins, he'll, he'll take away all your sickness, all your diseases. As, as we look for him, as we search for him, not just to be around him, not just to settle for a presence where I can't see him, but encountering Jesus in such a way, he, he opens the eyes of your heart to behold him. Behold the Son of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold. We need to begin to behold Jesus in, in, this, in this season. In Hebrews uh, chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Come on. You know what? How do you grow in your faith? You're, you're spending that time with Jesus. You're fixing your eyes, the eyes of your heart. You're fixing them on Jesus. And it says he's the author of the faith. That means he, he, will, he will increase your faith. He will give you more faith. And as you begin to exercise the faith he's given you, he's going to perfect that faith, and he's going to give you more. And so this is all coming as, as, as from our hearts, you guys, as, as, we're, as we're preparing our hearts. You know, it says, it says in Deuteronomy, again, it says, look for the Lord with all your heart. In Deuteronomy 6, verse 5, it says, love the Lord with all your heart. And so we're supposed to, we're also, it's a time where we really fall in love with Jesus. Falling in love with him right now, with all our heart. Giving our hearts over to him fully. And it says in, in, uh, in, in um, Joshua 2, 25, it says, serve the Lord with all your heart. 2 Kings 23, verse 3, it says, follow the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs 3, 5, it says, trust the Lord with all your heart. Job 22, 22, lay up uh, his words in your heart. Huh. Psalms 1914. May the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. And so, again, getting, a, getting a, away from distraction and this that time of meditating on God, meditating on his goodness, you know, it, it begins to transform us. And, it, and it's pleasing to the Lord. Do you want to please God? How do we please God? <laughs> we... We be still and know that he's God. Listening prayer, meditating on the Lord 
get rid of distraction, and here he, he will always come. He always comes. And, uh, you know, he's initiating it right now. You don't have to try to go after it. He wants to give it to you. We just have to make time for him right now in this season. And it says in Proverbs 17, 22, a cheerful heart is good medicine. You've been sick. You're not feeling well. Hey, get the joy of the Lord. Get the kingdom of God in you, that righteousness, peace, and joy. Did you know that one-third of the kingdom of God is joy? Laughter is good medicine. It's good. It's good for the heart. And, uh, and I think it, it, it's, and it's been scientifically proven as we laugh and as we're joyful. It releases chemistry in our body. And it builds our immune system, and it actually makes us better. And so it's the joy of the Lord is our strength, you guys. We need to be the happiest people on earth because we have a great inheritance. And this all comes through our heart, you guys. It comes through the heart. A cheerful heart is good medicine. In Matthew 5, verse 8, Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now, we want to see God, don't we? So it's the purity. As, as, as he says, there's a blessing, you're going to see me. And I said, not in years to come when we pass away and go to be with them. I believe we're going to see God now in the land of the living. But it takes a pure, that pure heart as it comes upon us, upon us, you know, and we ask the Lord for that through his grace and through repentance. As he purifies our hearts, he says, I'm going to give you a blessing and you're going to be able to see me. Come on. I mean, this is the promises of God. And so how... So how do we open uh, our hearts fully to God? Well, number one, we have to ask. Uh, and I've talked about this before, I think, with you guys. In the kingdom, it's a requirement to ask. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. But it says in, in Psalms 86, uh, uh, 11, it says, Give me an undivided heart. Isn't that a good prayer to pray? We don't want to have a divided heart. We want to have an undivided heart to God. You know, that's a lot of us, when we divide our heart between, um, you know, the world and, and everything that we're doing and giving God a portion of our heart, that's, that's a divided heart. But we want an undivided heart. You know, life starts when we, when we die to self. Did you know that? that you, you're going to be the most fulfilled in life when you give everything to Jesus. And I love it, you know, is what Smith Wigglesworth, I probably quoted this to you before, but he said, you know, if we have all of self, we get none of God. Or we can have less of self, and then we get more of God. But if we have none of self, we get all of God. And so what are we hanging on to? Life starts when we, when we choose to die to self and live for God, and then, and then fulfillment comes, because we're in the center of God's will. Life Life makes sense. We're fulfilled because, we, because we're fulfilling our destiny in Him. We're not losing out on anything. We're gaining so much because we're advancing the kingdom of God. We're doing His will. And so the blessings of God comes upon us. You know, in Psalms 51.10, it says, Create in me a pure heart. So you might say, I don't have a, a, you know, a, a pure heart. Well, it says, you know, uh, the, the psalmist says, Lord, create in me one. <laughs> Did you know God's a creator? And he will create in you for asking. He will give you that heart. Create in me a, 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 a pure heart, Lord. That is such a powerful and amazing prayer. You know, God loves those kinds of prayers. In Ezekiel, <clears throat> it's like the Lord answers. I love because, you know, that's why it's so good to be in the Word. God answers that prayer in Ezekiel 36, 26. He says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you, and I will, I will remove from you a heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Come on. See, we ask for it, and the Lord says, I'm giving it to you. God wants us to have it. But it's ours for the asking. And so our prayer, there's four things. There's four things in our, our, our prayer to give us, you know, to give us uh, the hearts that are after his heart. Psalms 139, 23, and 24. It says, search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Test me 
and know my anxious, my anxious thoughts, see if there's any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. So there's four things. Search me, test me, see me, and lead me. Come on. And, and he will work that new heart within us and give us his heart. Oh, so good. And then our, our testimony is Psalms 119, verse 32. And it says, I, I run in the path of your commands, for you have set my heart free. Come on. And Galatians, you know, 5.1, it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. So, so that right now, our heart is so important, you guys, to the Lord. God wants to do heart surgery on all of us. And he can't use us unless our heart is right before the Lord, you guys. But it's ours. So it's an easy thing. It's acknowledge, understanding what God is doing right now, and then asking him, creating me, give me a, give me a pure heart. And, and, and the Lord loves that prayer. He wants us to ask that prayer right now. And again, he will create it. Well, I don't have it. It's, never, it's not even my, my generational downline. We don't have those kind of hearts. But I want to tell you that he'll create it in you. He will give it to you, and he will create it in you for the asking. Isn't that good news? I mean, that's amazing. So that's, that's basically what I had for you, but I also had um, a little bit of a bonus for you as I was just doing some um, a daily, just reading the word. The Lord spoke to me out of, <clears throat> out of Psalms 19. And I just want to just quickly uh, go over that with you. And, um, and this, is, uh, this is all free, you guys. Um, Proverbs 19, <clears throat> and it's 7 through 9. And the Lord began to speak to me. You know, as I'm just meditating on the word, all of a sudden, I've read this before, but it didn't really, uh, it didn't really, uh, it, it didn't jump out at me. So, uh, excuse me, Proverbs 19, 7 through 9. Oh, excuse me, Psalms 19. No wonder did it make sense. I knew that. I'm just testing you guys. You guys are going through a test right now. Yeah, I knew that. I'm just, okay. Psalms 19, 7 through 9. It says, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statues of the Lord are trustworthy, making the wise simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. And the ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. And the Lord just began to talk to me about these six things. It says, it starts out by saying uh, that in verse, in verse 5, uh, or actually in verse 10, it says, these things are more precious than gold, uh, than much pure gold, and they're sweeter than honey, than the honeycomb. Uh, and so, so these six things are more precious than gold, uh, more than pure gold, and sweeter than honey. Uh, and, uh, and it says, and by, and by them is your servant warned uh, in keeping them, uh, there is a great reward. Now, I really believe there's a great reward coming to us if we keep these things. Number one, the law of the Lord revives our soul. How many of you know it's, it's good to have a, a soul right now that's living and it's revived? Uh, the law of the Lord, we, for in the law of the Lord, it says it revives our soul. It says the statutes of the Lord uh, gives wisdom. Uh, the precepts of the Lord gives joy. The commandments of the Lord brings illumination, a revelation. The fear of the Lord keeps us pure. And the ordinances, ordinances of the Lord keep us righteous. And so these are things I, I really feel right now. If, and if we keep these things and ask the Holy Spirit to help us in these six things right now in this time, uh, it says these are, are going to be way more precious than money, our possessions, and, and uh, way sweeter than anything else God can give you. 
but also that, you know, if you keep these things, get ready, because it says, it says right here, in keeping, the, in keeping these, there is a great reward. Not just a reward, but a great reward, the Bible says. And again, it's not when we die and go to heaven and, and, and live for him in, in the kingdom of heaven. No, it's for here and it's for now. God wants to reward us. He wants to give you a great reward. Now, what is that reward? We're going to have to ask the Lord for each of us. What is that reward? Uh, I believe it's whatever God has given you in your heart, that those seeds that he's planted in your heart, uh, I believe he's going, to, he's going to do exceeding abundantly above anything you could ask or imagine in this next season. But again, these are some things I feel like the Lord is showing me right now that I'm really going after I wanted to share those things with you today. So I think, I think that's all I had today. But uh, I, I thank you for your time. It's, I feel so connected with you guys. Uh, you know, and it's, a, it's an honor, it's a privilege to be able to just to share with you right now because we're all going after the same thing, aren't we? That's right. And that's we right. need to understand where we've entered in to that new era. <clears throat> the old is gone, the, we're into the new. And what does it look like from here going forward? And God has that for us. Again, yes. As we as we, we steal ourselves and listen, He's going to give us great strategies for this for this new era. All right. Well, God bless you guys. Um, let's just pray. All right. Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for the days that we're living in. Lord, these didn't take you by surprise. You saw this day coming, and this time we're in. And Lord, we thank you for this time. And Lord, I want to thank you that you've chosen us for a time such as this. And I believe, Lord, we're going to see one of the greatest awakenings that planet Earth has ever seen or experienced. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that every one of us and everyone here today that's listening, Lord, every one of us, Lord, would fall in perfect alignment, Lord, with what you're doing and saying. Lord, I'm asking, Lord, that you would create in us new hearts and pure hearts. May we be men and women, Lord, after your heart. Lord, we know that you're searching hearts right now. And so, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would create in us that heart that pleases you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. We bless you. Lord, we, we, we're, we're living in the days, Lord, where we're exciting. We thank you, Lord, you removed all fear from us. Lord, that we're, we have excitement for the future going forward. And Lord, we'll never forget, Lord, that before time began, you knew us by name and you chose for us to be alive at a time such as this for what you're about to do. And we thank you for that. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Yeah.